Um, we've seen so many positive uh, results from wounds that, for whatever reason, have been resistant to forward progress. They haven't healed for months to years, and um, in, in working with the, the people at the hospital, especially the wound care nurse, um, having worked with these for a long period of time, seeing no results, and now incorporating this material into their treatment plan, and all of a sudden they get forward progress, and these, these wounds that haven't healed or haven't had any, any movement, uh, so to speak, in, in a long time, all of a sudden get jump-started, and, uh, and begin to heal. The IRB, the Institutional Review Board, had set up a protocol um, identifying what patient types uh, could be incorporated into the study. Uh, the wound care nurse then uh, enrolled and actually uh, treated the patients with the, with the fiber material. When we started the human trial, uh, we thought we would do uh, pretty well with the tissue based on the animal experiments. Uh, the types of wounds we were treating are called uh, venous stasis ulcers. Uh, they're non-healing wounds that are found uh, primarily in diabetic patients. You don't have to be diabetic, but that's uh, uh, primarily you're going to have venous stasis if you've got diabetes. And so uh, we put these fibers, uh, these materials on the wounds, uh, wrap them uh, very simply, just put a, a cover over it and, and wrap that, and we pretty much immediately started to see um, the, the tissue start to either fill in if it was a deep cavity wound or the skin started to re-epithelialize. So this is the first dynamic uh, material. It, it's different than powder. That, I mean, powder is powder. It's, it's a single granule of material. If you put a lot of them on there, that's fine. Uh, but you really can't make it into a bandage. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't flex. Uh, it doesn't fill up cavities, uh, it's basically got no bounce back ability where this, this form of the material does. It acts very much like a cotton ball and uh, we think that's advantageous. Borate based bioactive glasses are very similar in composition uh, to silicate except uh, the, the glass former is, has been changed. And what that allows us to do with the borate glass is it uh, reacts at a much faster rate and uh, this increased reaction rate will lead to uh, faster resorbability in the body a uh, quicker release of specific ions that are added to the glasses and, and, and this we think will overall uh, uh, promote the healing process. Most people think of glass as uh, uh, what they're familiar with is a broken uh, glass uh, or container, a jar, in which it's very sharp it's, uh, uh, and it can cause injury on its own accord. In, in this case, the material, you know, you're talking about a fiber product that's on the same order as cotton or felt. It's very soft, uh, very absorbent, uh, pliable, moldable. Um, you know, it's a very different form. Glass comes in a unique variety, of, a vast variety of forms. Um, and in this particular form, uh, yeah, I don't think it serves anything but, but good uh, intentions to the body. If you were to look at uh, some of the glass fiber that we're making and compared that to what the microstructure of a blood clot looks like, they're almost identical. And so it's, it's actually mimicking what the body would want to produce if it had the ability to form a blood clot or uh, you know if, if the tissue is damaged, the microstructure of the fiber is exactly what the body would be looking for. As these glasses react, they release alkali, uh, which would raise the pH to maybe uh, 9 or 10 and, and that uh, pH increase is what's kind of been uh, is the anecdotal evidence for killing bacteria but uh, living tissues such as uh, you know skin or muscle or something like that uh, that th those tissues uh, have an, uh, a vascular network that's going to pull some of that uh, uh, alkali away and it doesn't seem to affect living tissue, it just really uh, seems to kill the bacteria, which is, which is a, a huge benefit. This material can take many forms. You can mold it, uh, you can, um, if you just stuff it in a hole, it would much more uh, want to fill that gap back up than if you just kind of poured in powder or something. I mean, a powder would completely fill it, but then as that wound tries to close, 
it's not going to be able to actually compress that material nearly as well as this light fluffy fiber material. We've got fibers in this material that we've measured in the range of probably 200 nanometers up to uh, just a couple of microns. And so the majority of the fiber diameter in this material is, uh, I would classify as nano. The beads that are in there, uh, probably a few hundred microns. So those aren't nano sized beads, but the fibers definitely are in the nano range. The beads improve the ability to, to work the fiber. Um, they also, I mean, as we make the fiber, uh, beads are kind of uh, introduced into the material, but with the fiber we get a very quick reacting material and the bead that's left behind would react uh, over a longer period of time. So we've got a, uh, a quick shot of release of, of different things from the glass fibers and then the beads would continue to uh, deliver different ions that will promote uh, different healing uh, aspects that you want. I can envision every medic and actually every uh, war fighter having a supply of this in a foil pack that they can simply rip open, apply to the wound site, and uh, forget about it. Hopefully they can carry on with their duties. If not, uh, and, the, and the individuals being transported back to a higher level of care, then those physicians have something that's already doing everything that they would want uh, something to be doing, uh, and then they don't have to remove it. When you think of a, uh, the properties of an ideal dressing for the battlefield, you want something that is easily applied, you want something that will stop bleeding very quickly, you want something that will at least address the, uh, uh, the antimicrobial problems that are encountered there. You'd like something that supports surrounding tissue that they can get a hold of and, and begin to grow in. And if you can um, uh, revascularize that growing tissue uh, and, and, and grow blood vessels, uh, that's even better. None of the bandaging, bandaging or dressing systems that we have today, um, uh, that are at least in the field, offer that. They're, they're simply either cotton or gauze uh, coverings and uh, that have to be removed at a later point in time and probably the final uh, point of uh, uh, properties is you'd like to be able to put something into a person that, that does all of what I mentioned before and then you never have to touch it again and the, the uh, bioactive glass fiber does all of those things. Currently we're planning a study uh, at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, they've got a very good wound healing and wound regeneration center up there and we're going to work with them to uh, basically try to determine uh, what in these glasses is promoting the healing. So now that we've got um, you know, some anecdotal information, we've got some preliminary animal results, we've got some human data, uh, we found the right people to go forward and actually to figure out what in the biology is triggering these wounds to start healing.